You should all be here for uh, Web App Builder for ArcGIS. So we're on the right session there. Introduction to Web App Builder. How many of you are attending Dev Summit for the first time? Okay, that's cool. Um, if you're staying through till Friday, hopefully you have you've heard about the there's a party tomorrow night, right? And if you're here for the first time, um, Jim mentioned at the plenary yesterday morning there's the infamous dodgeball tournament. No, none of you seem very enthusiastic. Well, it's uh, it, uh, inspired by the movie Dodgeball, right? A lot of the development staff like to play, and we encourage you to sign up for it so then you can join a team. And there's a rule that we cannot have a team of all Esri staff. So part of the kind of Dev Summit experience is to join a team, have an Esri staff member on your team, and you have that camaraderie and that bonding. So you don't have to play. You could always just sit, sit and watch and watch people get pelted by dodgeball. So that's always amusing. Something else you should be aware of is if you have questions, I want to remind you that the showcase closes on Friday. So if you have a list of questions that you need to ask, you want to make sure you go to the showcase today or tomorrow because it will not be open on Friday. We will have tech sessions on Friday. So please adjust your schedules accordingly. All right? Okay, so how many of you are using Web App Builder for ArcGIS now? Okay, a few of you, cool. So, uh, well, thanks for coming to our session. My name is Derek, with me is Jin Shah, and we are here to talk about Web App Builder. Uh, Jin Shah is actually the lead product engineer for Web App Builder for ArcGIS, so she knows the product very, very well. Save all your hard, deep, technical questions for her. Um, I am not a developer, but I help with the team, and I help kind of promote it and market it, um, and also help to get requirements. Um, and if you've seen us, uh, if you've seen me do a tech session before, this gentleman saw me do one on Sunday, I always like to kind of w get the crowd awake and warmed up. You guys saw that uh, inspiring uh, keynote talk, just to make sure as you're sipping your coffee, and so we're all in a good mood before we do our, our session, okay? So uh, keep in mind the, the quality of comedy may be low, so set your expectations low, okay? So, how many of you commute to work, right? It, it can be frustrating. Um, I know some people who drive 45 minutes to an hour. And you know that when you're driving and then you're stuck in traffic, it's very, very frustrating. Usually, if I'm carpooling with someone, I will ask the person next to me to stick their neck out the window to see if they can see a sign. You know, on the right-hand side, if it's like left lane is closing or right lane is closing. Everyone with me so far? But if you saw this sign, I think you would be very frustrated getting to work, okay? I have another uh, traffic sign for you. Um, I'm sure, just like me, it's really, you wanna see your tax dollars at work. You wanna make sure they're, they're being spent very wisely. But when you see this sign, I am frustrated because yes, I know that when it rains, there's water on the road, okay? This one here, it's a real sign. And at first you may think, this is stupid. Why did they put this sign? But if you pay attention to the bottom very carefully, you have to, oh, by the way, the bridge is out. So you wanna make sure you read that carefully. Now, um, I'm sure many of you, you know, in, maybe in your younger days or if you have a family, you like to go on road trips. You drive on vacation. Um, I know my dad would drive like 12 hours, it was like insane, and you're exhausted, and you're on the highway, you're looking for an exit to stay in a hotel, or a motel, right? Now, if you had that long road trip, and you saw this sign, you would think, hey, maybe I will pull over, but maybe not. Uh, keep driving. This next one I found, uh, I think it's funny not to be mean, I know the truck is crashed under the bridge, and I feel bad for the truck driver, but I think the, the ad, the slogan on the truck is, is very amusing. There are no shortcuts on the road to success, right? Finally, we have one more, and I don't want to get in trouble with HR, so this, this next one's rated PG-13. So if you don't like horror movies, if you have a weak stomach, just look away. Close your eyes and look away for a few minutes. All right, a fair warning. Um, so. I also should say that I'm a, I'm, a fa I'm a dad, 
and I like my, I love my kids, okay? So this is all meant in humorous fun, right? This is another sign uh, in a national park, Southeast Asia. Uh, it's at a trailhead where, you know, if you're hiking on the trail, what to do if you see a mountain lion? Here's a tip, don't show fear. Back away slowly. Another one might be, you know, treat it like a bear. Be large and shout to scare it, right? Now again, this is PG-13, so if you don't, uh, just look away, close your eyes for a few minutes and we'll start the session, all right? Just wanna make sure we're all, or if you're walking with small kids, throw them at the mountain lion and run. Okay, <laughs> let's move on. All right, so again, thank you guys. You should be here for Web App Builder for ArcGIS. Uh, my name is Derek, with me is Jin Shah, and we are very pleased that you're here. Uh, what are we gonna do over the next hour? Well, for those of you who have used Web App Builder, some of the content may be a bit of a review. However, we're gonna give you a good foundation on understanding and learning the product. For those of you who have not used Web App Builder, well, you're in for a treat. You will learn exactly what it is and what it can do <laughs> and its capabilities. So we'll talk about what it is as a product, we'll give you a very quick tour of its functionality, we'll talk about some customization options, so for those of you who are developers, there's lots of development opportunities for you, and also we will talk about the community and resources available. As Julie mentioned at the plenary yesterday, Web App Builder for ArcGIS is actually one of our most popular apps and it has a very vibrant user community. In fact, a couple of them are at the Dev Summit here. Robert Scheitlin, who's phenomenal, he's a great guy who works for the County of Alabama, and uh, he just writes code and contributes widgets. Rebecca Strach is also here. Uh, she maintains a resource site, so look for them in the other Web App Builder sessions. Um, of course, Jin Shaw and myself will make ourselves available for questions as well, and She's at the uh, ArcGIS Online Island to answer questions, and we have some of our development staff there as well. All right, so let's get started. I'm sure you've seen this slide before. This is the classic ArcGIS platform slide, right? Um, where ArcGIS can be deployed in the cloud or in your own infrastructure. At the very top, we have client applications. They could be web apps, they could be desktop apps, or they could be apps on mobile devices. They search for and connect for GIS, they search for and discover GIS resources through a portal, note the lowercase p. It could be ArcGIS Online, or it could be Portal for ArcGIS. And of course, a portal is useful if it's powered by GIS servers and it has data content. Now, I put this slide here for context because Web App Builder is at the top of the stack. It is a web client to resources in your portal, to resources in your ArcGIS Online organization, or Portal for ArcGIS. And Esri, as you saw in the plenary yesterday, uh, Kelly and Julie presented several different options for you, the configurable app templates, Web App Builder, and also App Studio that allow you and empower you to quickly and easily build apps. So you have lots of different options. We're gonna focus on Web App Builder, the Web App Builder piece. Everything starts with a web map. So you can see here we have this idea of a web map. Hopefully we're all familiar with what it is, right? We go into our ArcGIS online organization or portal for ArcGIS. We go to the map viewer and we make a web map and I'll show it to you quickly in a demo. Once I have my web map, which we know is a configuration file that tells our software what data to display and how to display it, we can then share and build an app around or for that web map. This first option is showing the configurable application templates. So we have roughly 30 different templates. <clears throat> they're, they're focus or workflow driven, right? You take your web map and your data and you hydrate that template. So we have templates for data editing, data comparison, showing historical data changes over time, showing elevation or other workflows. And they're great. They meet a specific need, which is quickly building an app for a specific purpose. But many of our users have asked us, hey, we want to use function X from template one and combine it with function Y in template two. Can we do that? And the answer is yes. We have Web App Builder for ArcGIS. 
This product allows you to quickly and easily build a web app without requiring any code through an awesome user experience and wizard and interface. And we give you over 50 widgets. Each widget represents a specific piece of functionality. You could build a really simple web application with maybe two widgets and two pieces of functionality. Or you could build the Uber app with all 50 widgets in theory and have every single piece of functionality. We don't recommend that as a best practice, but it's possible. And we're going to focus on Web App Builder. So as I mentioned, Web App Builder for ArcGIS, it's an app that's available inside ArcGIS Online and Portal for ArcGIS. It's been there for a couple of years, actually three years now, inside Online. And it's been included in Portal for ArcGIS, which is part of ArcGIS Enterprise, since the 10.3 release. The key takeaway is, of course, that yellow text, right? It is uh, meant for non-developers to quickly and easily build a web app. But it still allows developers to, ex to extend its capabilities. So you have a what you see is what you get user experience. We allow you to support and build 2D and 3D data, and you'll see both today. And the apps run in any web browser on any device. So you can open it up on your desktop, you can open it up in a web browser on your tablet, or on your smartphone. Built on the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, as you saw yesterday morning, lots of cool new enhancements. As those enhancements are added to the JavaScript API, the Web App Builder team works quickly to also enable that inside Web App Builder for ArcGIS. So it's extensible, and if you're a developer, and you write code in the JavaScript API, and you're a business partner, well, you can make custom widgets. And very soon, you can then potentially sell them in the ArcGIS marketplace. So that's coming. So there's two options to work with Web App Builder. The first is inside ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. So you would sign into your portal, lowercase p, right? And you can work with Web App Builder, and I'll demo that for you in a minute. Another option, of course, is to use Developer Edition. Now, don't let the name fool you. Even though it's called Developer Edition, you do not need to be a developer to use it. But Developer Edition is slightly different. You download Developer Edition and host it on your own machine, and you can start to work with Web App Builder. The beauty of it is it allows you to use custom widgets within its builder experience. And you'll see that because Jin Shaw is going to show you how to, how to configure it. The point we want to make, though, is that last bullet, whether you use Web App Builder inside ArcGIS Online or Web App Builder Developer Edition, the user experience is like 99% the same. So this is great. You know, the team has worked really hard to make it almost seamless. So we have this slide here for the Web App Builder Live Sites Showcase. And we just want to impress upon you that there are a lot of cool apps already available out there for Web App Builder. Let's take a look. So right now I'm in um, Firefox, and you can see this is the Web App Builder Live Sites Showcase Gallery. Um, this is a gallery that the team maintains. It has over 75, almost 80 apps. These are the apps that customers have allowed us to reshare and promote, so we have permissions to reference them. And they range from a variety of different use cases, from the classic parcel viewer for local government, to an app tracking snowplow movements for a city, to an app displaying bus routes. Um, we have tourism apps, so where to find points of interest. We also have uh, agricultural land use maps. And there's a good mix of out-of-the-box applications and also custom functionality. Let's take a, a quick tour. I'm going to start off by showing you this one for the city of Mountain View. It's, it's pretty simple, really, using out-of-the-box capability. They're showing land parcels. They have a legend. And you can quickly see you know, what land parcels are within my area. And this is built out of the box. We can go a step further. This is for the city of Evansville. They have a commercial site where, again, they've used out-of-the-box functionality, where they're showing different commercial sites that are available. But they've also incorporated this query widget so if maybe if I'm a realtor or if I'm a developer, I can run a simple query. I want to see which, which uh, commercial sites have pending status. 
I can add a spatial filter to limit my features only in my current map extent, and then I can get the results returned. Okay, so again, out of the box functionality. Now, the beauty of Web App Builder is it's extensible. So we have another app by the county of Simcoe, and they done some amazing UI interfaces um, design for their app. This is a, a tourism app where they have a map. Maybe I want to see stuff such as uh, local real estate. And that they built in this menu, and I can view my residential, my con condos and commercial uh, sites, and I have this built-in gallery, right? So it's totally extensible. It, there's a lot of potential here, and I can, they also reimagine the base map widget a little bit to change the imagery. Now my favorite, of course, is something uh, recently new. This was uh, developed by Esri Singapore in conjunction with a third party, and they have the classic uh, tourist site finder app, and this is the classic 2D view, but what is really sexy is they also have this 3D view. So it's leveraging some of the 3D display capabilities offered by Web App Builder, and as you can see now, we're loading the scene. We have these really nice buildings, um, and it's you know quite seamless, right? I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. They've added some nice, uh, fun user experience stuff by showing weather, so I can simulate the weather. Right now it's sunny. I could have it rain a little bit, or I could have a massive rainstorm, okay? The tough crowd, they're not, uh, they're not impressed. Hang on, okay, we'll go back to sunny. But another cool tool that I really like about this app is this. It's meant for tourists. They, they're using a near me widget. So if I'm a tourist, I'm gonna click on here. I wanna see what's near me, like what are some points of interest? I'll interactively click the map, and look at that. Now, I get this buffer, and it returns to me all my uh, restaurants, ATMs, et cetera. Now obviously there's some customization here, but we wanna highlight to you the potential, right? But honestly, a big chunk of our customers are one, two, three person shops. And they're mandated by their management to build a whole bunch of apps that meet a bunch of requirements. So here's another example, city of Winchester, Virginia. Uh, it's a one person shop, very nice lady. And she, she's the GIS person but she's used Web App Builder to deploy one, two, three, four, five, six, eight different apps for different purpose use cases within local government, okay? That's how easy it is to deploy Web App Builder. We have a user success story featuring her, and she's basically said, in under a week, I got these apps out there, and over time, as we add new enhancements, she enhances these apps. You can quickly and easily update them, all right? So hopefully that'll, uh, make you kind of think about, hey, what are some other apps that I could use Web App Builder for? Now, the numbers don't lie. This is, I literally took their screenshot at like 7.15 or 8.15 this morning. Uh, what you're looking at here is the metrics. How many apps are currently hosted in ArcGIS Online using Web App Builder? So <clears throat> we're almost at 200,000. I can't wait for us to break that number. And you can see also the pie chart at the bottom showing you which ones are public, which ones are shared. What I showed you in the live sites group are the, are the 70 plus customers that have allowed us to reference their site. But I'm always looking for more sites. So if you have a site that you've built and it's publicly shared, please let me know. I wanna promote it. I wanna show it off, okay? So there's a whole bunch I know that are there that they're hidden or they haven't told me. All right, so the other thing we wanna emphasize is this idea of community, right? Yes, Web App Builder is a very cool product, that is true. Extensible, that is true. But we have many, many users. Uh, this is a screen capture of GeoNet. If you're not familiar with this, GeoNet is like the Esri online kind of discussion community. Um, you can post questions if you have questions. You can sign in and answer other people's questions. And it's like a, it's like a discussion forum, if you will. You can get ideas, ask for code samples, et cetera. Um, sometimes the team also posts news bits or tips and tricks. But what we want to emphasize is GeoNet, because as you know, ArcGIS is a big platform. There's over 300 discussion forum sites within GeoNet or, pl or places. And we did a quick query on the number of followers, and as you can see, the Web App Builder custom widgets place is number two, the number two most followed forum, if you will. The general web app builder for ArcGIS forum is like number seven, eight, something like that. And we have a third one, which is still new, so it's not up there yet. But apart from 3D, you know, we're the, we're the top group. 
Now, we're pretty excited to see that, not because we want to say we're cool, although we are, but because there's lots of people using Web App Builder and they're actively participating in the discussion. Right? And as I said, if you see Robert Scheitlin, he's going to be in the probably the advanced Web App Builder sessions. You know, thank him. He posts widgets. It's a hobby for him to write code. Okay? Lovely gentleman. His grandkids live far away, so he's got nothing better to do. Uh, with, with respect, Love the, he's a good guy. But okay, we've talked about Web App Builder. Let's really look at the process for those of you who haven't used it yet. How do I get started? What do I do, right? This is a screen capture of the help doc. You can build a brand new web app in under five minutes following these three easy steps, right? I click create new app, I pick a style, I select the map, add widgets, and configure the attributes, and I publish it. I would argue you could take this workflow and make it into three easy steps. I decide what data I want, I decide the functionality I want, and I define the look and feel. And, and it's that easy. Let's take a look. So I'm in Chrome web browser. I've already logged into my ArcGIS online organization. And what you're seeing here is the ArcGIS online map viewer. I just have a simple web map showing the Naperville water network. You guys saw the same data in a demo yesterday in, in the ArcGIS runtime demo. Uh, the reason why we show this data a lot is because the lovely folks at the city of Naperville have given us permission to, sh to sh demo their data. But uh, if I want to start to build a web app around this web map, what do I do? Well, I hit the share button. And I can decide if I want to share this app with other people. Maybe I'll just share it within my organization. And I click create a web app. And right away I have a choice. I can use one of the configurable app templates, which was demoed by Kelly Hutchins yesterday morning. Again, one of the 30 different purpose-driven or workflow-focused apps, right? They are designed for one use case only, like data comparison, data editing, um, crowdsourcing, et cetera. And that's fine. If that's what you want to do, you can use it. Or you can choose Web App Builder. And here, I can say Naperville Water Network app demo. I'm going to scroll down and hit get started. Once I click this button, it loads the Web App Builder application inside ArcGIS Online. And as you can see, the user interface will pop up. Now, for those of you who haven't used it, let me give a quick lay of the land. On your left-hand side are the four configuration tabs. These are properties that you can set for the app you are building. On the right-hand side is a real-time live preview. I love this user experience. As you make changes on the left, they will be reflected on the right. For example, maybe I want a green banner. I click this button, and there it is on the top. Right? We right away, under the Theme tab, offer you eight different options to change the appearance, the look and feel of the app. For example, right now you see a banner on top. Well, maybe I want to have a tab theme, and I up, it gets updated. Or maybe I want to use a dart theme, and I have a, a banner on the bottom. Or if I like using MacBooks, I have this kind of MacBook-like uh, UI at the bottom, Okay, this launch pad theme. Again, I, I can set a custom color. I like green, and I can save it. I could go to my attribute tab, and right away, uh, have a custom title, right? So I could say Water Network Viewer. Click the logo icon and browse to add a custom logo. Maybe I have this little uh, water tap icon here. Again, it gets reflected, right? I could add shortcut links if I wanted to. Go to Esri.com or whatever. So that's a quick tour of the look and feel. I can go to the Map tab. And if I want to, I could actually change out the data content. Maybe I don't want to build a web app for this water network. I simply click Choose Web Map, and I have a choice. I could click here and browse to and pick another web map in my ArcGIS online organization, or my content, or within groups that I belong to. Or if I want to, I could actually click Create a Map and make, make a brand new web map from scratch and populate this app. But the real power of Web App Builder is this widgets tab. Here is where I pick and choose among those 50 different widgets 
for the different capabilities that I want to enable in my app, right? Now notice, I have some of these widgets on the left already selected. They're part of my UI. For example, notice as I hover over this home widget, if you look a little bit to the right of that, it, it turns red. Everyone see that red box? So it tells me the widget is there. And if I don't want it, I click the eye icon and it goes away. Or if I want to keep it, well, I'll leave it back on. Same thing with my um, coordinates widget. Look in the lower left-hand corner. See how the coordinates are appearing? Same thing. I could remove that. Right? Now, if I want to add new widgets, for example, to, the, to this bottom toolbar, I can click the controller, and now I'm going to click this plus sign. Here, you can see, and the reason why we have the scroll bar is because of the display resolution, right? But uh, we have all our widgets that enable, that support 2D data available to you. So really quickly, I can say, let me add the base map widget. I hit OK. I see the base maps that I'm gonna, that's going to be enabled in this widget. Hit OK. And notice now it's part of my toolbar at the bottom. And if I want to see how it works, I can click on it to see how it would appear and behave in my app. So far, so good? Ooh, yes, OK. So really quickly, lots of different widgets from adding data, doing analysis. So if I want to enable some spatial analysis capabilities using the uh, spatial analysis services in ArcGIS Online or my portal for ArcGIS instance, I could do that. I can click on that, hit OK. And I can pick and choose which tools I want to enable. Right now, 0 of 25 have not been enabled. Maybe I'll pick these two. Hit OK. And again, that tool is there with those two tools. Right? What other ones are useful? We can build the queries in the query widget. I could add a geoprocessing widget. Uh, something I want to show is we also have, let me scroll down here, this smart editor widget. Maybe I want to do data editing over the web. A very common workflow is I have an enterprise or ARC SDE geodatabase. It is my authoritative data content, right? Those of you who have used enterprise geodatabases, I could make a version of my data. So I'm not editing the actual data. I then share that version as a feature service. I need feature services to do web editing. I then take my web app builder app with my, um, sorry, I take my feature service, I add it to a web map. Then I open it up in Web App Builder and I take my ed edit or smart editor widget, have it talk to the web map, which contains my feature service, which references my Arc SDE version data, and I can do web edit uh, editing over the web. Everyone with me so far? Okay. So I'm not going to do the actual editing because I'm not going to really edit my geometric network, but I want to highlight to you that for every widget, Depending on its capability, we give you options to configure what the end user can or can't do. So here, notice, my feature service has these, I don't know, eight or nine layers. I can decide which ones are going to be editable and which ones or, are not. I can also decide, do I maybe only want to support data updates or do I want to allow deletes? This is a big one, right? Keep in mind, when I talked about my workflow, the first thing I said was take your, SD, take your enterprise, your database data, make a version, right? We never want to touch the end all, be all authoritative data. We want to modify the version. And then somebody who manages my enterprise geo database on the back end would do the QA, QC, post reconcile, right? We're all familiar with that. This, this, if not, come see us, all right? And again, we have options like do we want to use a template fil feature template? You know, do I want to have a little dialogue box that says, hey, you want to delete something. Are you sure? Yeah, that might be nice to have, right? Hit OK. And again, the widget's in my UI. And I can click on it and see how it behaves. Here are my, here are my templates. And what makes this really awesome is, and this is a preview, I can actually click on something and you know what? Let me just draw something. Ooh, this really worked. Like, this is a preview. This is all there. It's a tough crowd, Jin Shaw. They haven't had their coffee yet. I don't know. All right. So, oh, attribute table widget. If I want to see attribute tables, this is here. Okay. Now, I don't have time to build a 
sophisticated demo. She's got some amazing 3D stuff to show you. But when I'm done and I'm happy, I hit save. Life is good. I now have a new item in my content, in my ArcGIS online organization. I have the option to pull the code down. And I'll, I'll talk about that later on. Okay? And if I want to, I launch my app. Here it is. Life is good. And again, I look at it. I can play with it. Right? Decide if I'm happy with it. And if I'm not, no problem. Go back to Web App Builder. Let's say, for example, my manager, he or she finds green really annoying. It's not going to meet my um, 508 compliancy because of colorblindness. OK, no problem. I'll change the color and make it orange. I don't tell my manager that. It took me two days. I don't know. That was a joke. You guys get the idea, OK? Lots of flexibility here. Oh, let me preview, sorry. Oh, that's the next. I was going to talk about the next. Hang on. Um, I kind of got ahead of myself here. But you see here, or, uh, orange banner should pop up. You guys get the idea, right? OK? So we just want to, I want to emphasize very, very cool, very exciting. So I mentioned we have over 50 widgets. 40 plus, I think it's like 45, 46, are meant to work with 2D data content. And this is a screenshot showing all the widgets that you can have. And as I mentioned, as a best practice, Esri says you should build focused apps with limited capabilities. Or you guys could try to recreate ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro on the web. That's possible. Not a good idea, but it's possible. Right? We give you that flexibility. And it's really easy to flip them out. So you could add one widget, preview it. If you're not happy, pull it out and put something else. Right? And if you're a developer, we give you an extensibility framework. You can make your own widgets. If you're a business partner, you can make your own and then potentially sell it within the ArcGIS marketplace. That is coming. <coughs> So for the classic GIS analyst, he or she, we provide many classic core uh, GIS map viewer type capabilities. If you think we're missing something, let us know. We want to hear that feedback. We want to make it better. Something I want to highlight is the geoprocessing widget. I didn't demo it, but basically, if you're a GIS analyst and you've built a model in Model Builder and you share it as a geoprocessing service, you can enable that in Web App Builder with the geoprocessing widget. And we can show you at the island. In the interest of time, we're not going to show it, but it's there. That's really, really powerful. OK, this is what Jin Shaw wanted me to show. It's built on JavaScript. It uses HTML5 technology. So we said apps that you build run on any web browser on any device. So I can preview that in Web App Builder. Let me go back. I'm going to go back to my builder environment. And here, this was my configuration view. Now I'm going to go to my preview button. This is how the web app would look on a mobile device, right? So I can click, for example, I don't know, let's see, iPad Pro. And again, I can, you know, zoom. I wish the resolution wasn't so lousy, but you would see the buttons, right? But let me try something else. Let me try the Nexus 6. Scroll down. Here are my widgets. You guys see that? Here's how it would appear. Do you guys get the idea? So I can adjust. And again, we don't have to tell management it's this easy, right? The other wonderful thing is, a year ago, the team worked really hard to enable 3D. And the beauty of it is, the user experience for building a 2D app is the same in 3D. Okay? Same, you get a preview window, you get a configuration panel, and right now, we have about a dozen or so widgets for 3D capabilities. We don't have a lot of 3D functionality yet. Why is that? And I'm not trying to point fingers. We've enabled what's in the JavaScript API 4.0, 4.x. As they add more 3D capabilities, we will suck that in and enable that in Web App Builder. Okay? But you guys saw that really nice Singapore app, right? They use that Near Me widget. So just want you to be aware of that. And with that, Jin Shao is going to show you some 3D stuff. Your four, right? Thanks, Derek. This is the 3D 
FX widget. For 3D, we know usually two types of visualization. One is for reality. Another one is for data visualization. So this is basically showing Queen Elizabeth II spent her life traveling around 128 countries without passports. So 2015 <laughs> is Germany, France, so we also can make it cooler to rotate around. Um, you know, this effect is not good enough. Turn on another effect. Oh, maybe this is too much for her. <laughs> but how can we build this kind of app? Yes, we can build in two minutes, very quickly. Let's show, let me show you guys. You go to Access Online, go to my organization, my content, then go to create app using the web app builder. Two options, 2D or 3D. Remember, Derek show you can create a web app builder 2D app through share dialogue in the web map viewer. But for 3D, you cannot do it from the same viewer. That capability will be coming I don't know, I assume you see. But only right now, this is the only way you can create 3D with Web App Builder. Go to the create, three, choose 3D, then demo 3D, something like this. Then we'll enter in the builder environment. We're all familiar with that. The difference is, instead of map, we have scene tab, and which is the same, just different type of widget. So scene here, you can choose, you know, I want to choose three D FX global scene. Mm, might not be good. Let's try it. Then goes the widget. They have this called 3D FX widget. 3D FX widget is not part of JavaScript API for dot three yet. It's created by our team. So, um, but we want to incorporate with API so that API can has it as well. For this one, for example, the first one is Jet Trail. We saw that. Queen Elizabeth, that effect we call jet, jet trail. So you basically say, okay, what kind of date, uh, effect I want to use, what kind of layer, this is immigration, then what kind of display field, because this is fake data. We have this data, but we cannot show the real country. So we're just using fake. So it used to be this kind of like country, but you don't want to see it. Um, then configure the field. Okay, save, enable. See, this is the effect. You say, okay, not very good. The color, I don't like it. Fine, let's choose different color. Maybe this is more outstanding. <laughs> So see, very quick, right? Well, within one minute, we, get, we build very fancy app. Then go to the launch, see? That's what you see on the screen. So I didn't see, save that red color, so they showed it as the original one, but you get idea. It's okay, you turn, turn around. Okay, let's go back here. So something I don't like, I don't like this kind of, but on the bottom you can turn it off on the widget. Uh, you say, okay, don't show value as percentage of all values, don't show it, it's fine. You can, you can adjust 
interval milliseconds. Anything you want to adjust it is fine. Okay. This is point. I said I want to see other effect. I have point feature data set. What should I do? Okay, you add another 3D FS widget. We call we're using point extrusion. Then we choose this perfect word bank data. This one is public, so we can use it. Display field as country and the visualization field I add here. Exports label exports. And then add another one imports. Okay, leave everything as de default. Save, go to the second widget called point extrusion. So we see United States, you know, exports, this number one, China, number six. Then I see another panel as imports, United States, number one as well. You can see, you know, turn around, fancy look, um, using different color, a customization color you want, purple, I like it. So this is point extrusion. Next, point line, then polygon, right? Let's go to see the polygon. Add the third one as polygon. I say I want to use area extrusion. Then they show me the what kind of polygon I can use. World country polygon, let's try this one. Um, name, maybe we're using population 2005, okay. And then go to the third. That's point uh, polygon extrusion. So impressive so far. <laughs> so it's easy. Build some very um, fancy app in this way. Um, the limitation, you said, what's the catch? Is right now 3D only support 2,000 features. So you have to make sure you, you have less than 2,000 features in your feature layer. So those kind of uh, uh, feature, uh, the feature services, just like regular any feature services, any point feature services, line polygon. So you can make them fancy in 3D. So if I turn off this 3D, I go to see the layer list. You can see those really like work bank data. It just really just point feature service. So how you create this kind of scene? You go to a scene, scene viewer, then add a globe there, and your feature services there. Then save it. Then you can pull into the web app builder. That's for the three D. Another one is 3D visualization, reality visualization. You say, okay, this is too fancy. Maybe I just want to show my city. It's fine. You say, okay, let me choose another thing like um, smart city thing. So you're loading all the cities, buildings inside app, then done. You can do to see slides, the shade, the change of the time, all the 
this is night time, this is dark. So you get idea. Um, so just pr provide some functionality you can use with your 3D app uh, with, for the data visualization or reality visualization. Okay, back to Derek. Okay, thank you. I have a couple of slides. Um, so if you use Web App Builder inside an ArcGIS online organization or portal for ArcGIS, something to be aware of is the fact that you can utilize the utility resources of your org. So for example, the base maps that you've enabled inside your organization, that's what gets pulled into the base map gallery widget. If you have uh, locator services for geocoding, or if you have custom print services hooked up to your portal, you can also, those can also be leveraged by the print widget and the search widget. That print is a big deal. You can basically use ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro to create a custom layout, share it through the export web map, um, export image geoprocessing service, register that with your organization and have basically any custom layout available in your web app builder apps through this widget. Now once you build the app, as you saw me build earlier, the app lives inside your organization or portal for ArcGIS. But you can go to the item details page and actually download all the source code for that app and host it on your own web server if you want to. Another benefit, of course, is once you've downloaded all the source code for that app, you can actually go under the covers and then configure the app further if you'd like as a developer, right? So you can maybe add other custom widgets or you know, do more advanced configurations. So let's talk quickly about customization. Two different options here. The first is a configurator, that's me. I am not a developer, but I can use developer edition. I can go and download third party custom widgets, add them to web app builder so they appear in my builder experience and leverage them in my apps. That's one common, very popular workflow. The other of option of course is if you're a developer, right? Where you literally can take web app builder, have a starting point, build an app, get the source code and then proceed to modify it as you like or you could write custom widgets. So developer edition, I mentioned this earlier, right? This is something you download from developers.arcgis.com. You literally download a zip file, you unzip it, and you install it locally on your machine. It runs locally on your machine. As you'll see through a couple of demos, it's got the same user experience as Web App Builder in, Arc in ArcGIS Online and Portal for ArcGIS but it allows you to work with custom widgets and themes. So just to quickly show you, I go to the developers at ArcGIS.com site. This was recently refreshed last week. And what I want to do is if I want to find Web App Builder, I scroll down, I go to learn more about building apps. And you'll see we have this building apps page now to reflect our uh, plenary story. And if I scroll down a bit further, you'll see here under configurable apps and app builders, we have Web App Builder for ArcGIS. I click this link, it takes you to the site where you can download developer edition, okay? Something to be aware of is when you use developer edition, the first thing you have to do is you have to connect it to a portal, lowercase p. So either an ArcGIS online organization or a portal for ArcGIS. And what you have to do is in that organization, you have to add Web App Builder Developer Edition as a new item and generate an app ID. And then take that app ID and register it with your Web App Builder Developer Edition. By doing this, the next time you open up Developer Edition, you'll sign in to connect to your portal and it'll be able to access all the information about that login, such as what web, app, web maps it has, what resources it has access to, et cetera. And to show that to you, we're gonna flip back over to Jin Shah. Developer Edition. I just want to mention, um, for the 3D part, I'll only show the global thing, right? It's the global, you say, I'm lo for local government, I want to see, only show the local city stuff for the data visualization, it's possible. You, you create a local thing in the web, scene uh, viewer, add your data in. All the effects is the same. Uh, this is just local thing, add some uh, smart city 
thin layer on top. Yet, a lot of people are using developer edition. So they download developer edition, then you start up. I want to get from the beginning, for example, here. Uh, I download developer edition here, go to 2.3, unzip it, then how I get started. If you are on the Windows, you click stop up that. That automatically open it for you. Next thing, it asks you to choose your organization or portal. So I choose online organization and app ID. We need register this developer edition locally run on your machine to online. How we can do that is the first challenge. We go to here, add item in application. Then copy my URL. Because running locally on my machine, so my machine is Blender 2. So go to here, copy, title. <coughs> what I'm doing is register my local developer edition to online. So here, go to the settings. Down bottom, they have a register. So okay, is I type browser correct? Redirect URI. This is very important. We put this machine here at HTTP, but sometimes you want to HTTPS. So. You forgot whether you put HTTP or HTTPS, I recommend it add two of them together. So direct URI could be HTTP or HTTPS. Done. Now look at here, we get this app ID. Copy, put them here. Continue. They rec recognize me I'm in the developer edition, I can use it right now. You only, can, you only do this once in your local machine. When you change your different organization, you may register another time. But if you stay with your one organization, you don't need to go through that step anymore. You always go, when you start up, always go inside here. For example, I say, okay, uh, maybe I already have my app, Creating online, maybe have 70% functionality is there. I want to enhance it with rest of 30% of the custom widgets. How can I do that? You just go to import and say import from my account, find my, my your app here, click it, then okay. I'm not going to do that demo it. I already imported here. So I open it. This is my app. I import it for Arcgis Online. You also cre can create from scratch here. Create new, go through default 2D, or you can create 3D. Just I demo in the Arcgis Online using 3D. Or we have very simple templates, focused templates for the editor experience. You don't so so you can try it. Um, so there are lots of options to, for you to get started. Import it from online, from portal organization, create new from scratch, from 2D or 3D or from templates. The next thing I want to demo is for the configure. A lot of people here say, okay, I'm not a developer, but someone gave my custom widgets or download it from GeoNet. Robert widgets all here, you know, pop-up panel is pretty awesome. Sorry. Pretty awesome. I want to use that custom widgets import in my app. How can I do that? Just download, go to GeoNet, find your, find your widget, download it, I already done it. Another nice part is he said, 
also show the look and feel. So this is from his side, the so left side, pre, pre view side, you can see this one. If this is good enough for you, say so I'm going to pull in. So the so pop-up panel is always on the left, not stuck in the map. This is when you say you want to pull into your app, great. So what you do basically, what I did is I just go to download, get this pop-up panel widget, unzip it as pop-up panel, and copy it into my Web Builder Developer Edition directory. Client stamp app widgets pop-up folder. So I just drop this widget into my widgets folder, just like all the other out-of-box widgets. Now I open it, open the builder. This is my imported app from online. I go to the widgets. I see this pop-up panel, custom widgets already inside the pool with the rest of out-of-box widgets. Just add it in, okay, save. <coughs> Look at here, this is very traditional uh, out-of-box map view pop-up because the revolution that show the mobile layout. But if I click here, this is my pop-up. See, this just pop-up panel, which I just import um, from GeoNet. Is that cool? So it's simple, right? That's, a, that's the beauty of developer edition for non-developers, you still can use custom widgets, make your app beauty. Another thing is, so I'm a developer. Great, you're awesome, you're a developer. We can go to Derek Mansion Developer Edition website. Go to the guide here. you see, get started how to run in Developer Edition or how to run as a Windows services because when you shut down your computer, your you, your builder might be gone. You want to host as a Windows services so that they can run all the time. You can do that. Uh, another thing is you know, widget development. That basically talking about how to create custom widget here. Another thing is sample code. The first thing, create a custom in-panel widget step by step. If you're the first time create custom widgets, go to this session first. Also, there are a lot of things for create things. A lot of people say they are interested in the looking and feel of the app, so you can customize your thing as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we, um, I know we're, we're getting close to the one hour mark, but we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is finish the slides, and there'll be an optional demo if you wanna stay later before lunch. So thanks, Jinshaw. Awesome demo. Hopefully you saw how easy it was to take developer edition, enable it, uh, make it work. She also showed you how you can get a third-party custom widget and then add it to developer edition. Okay? So if you're a configurator, life is good. Let um, Leverage what's available in the community. Now, as we mentioned, Robert Scheitlin made this place or this forum on GeoNet, right? There's over 35 plus custom widgets the last time I checked, which was last week. Notice there's been over 2,400 downloads. So people are using it. In fact, Robert and a couple of other key developers, like Larry, they, they've built a custom widget. People give feedback or they criticize or they say, can you add X? They update it. They add X. They, they modify. This is really cool. Okay? And in some instances, if we see that there's a real demand for it, we actually may add that or have in the past added that to Web App Builder as well. Okay. These will take you 90% of the way there. They're not guaranteed to work 100%, not supported by core, I want to mention that, but they may do what you need, or what you want. So, in addition to that, 
Other Esri development teams have also made custom widgets, the solutions team and the raster team. And they have their own GitHub pages where they've also provided widgets. Again, not supported by core, but you know, in the case of the raster team, they've made, I think, uh, eight or 10 widgets that work with image services. So if you're building an app to do raster data analysis, those are the widgets for you. If you're a developer, this is this the next two slides will touch on what you need to think about if you want to enable some custom capabilities, right? You can either rate, create custom widgets or custom themes, okay? And they all live inside the STEM app. Now, if you're going to build a custom widget, obviously you want to code in JavaScript, right? You want to take into consideration its appearance, what functionality it's going to use, and you also want to make sure it's configurable because when you build that functionality, you also have to build that configuration dialog if you enable it inside the builder user experience. Now, if you want to enable a custom theme, well, again, layout, branding, look and feel for the app. And the beauty of it is we have two additional sessions later on today and I think one tomorrow, one for building custom themes, one for enabling custom functionality. And we have a slide that shows you, uh, tells you more about it. Now something that Jin Shah touched on and she showed in her preview is Web App Builder Developer Edition also has templates, so starting points. Maybe you don't want to build an app from scratch. Well, you can take a template which has some pre-configurations and start to add functionality or remove functionality. More importantly, you can create your own templates. This is cool. And uh, we're running long on time, so I'll demo it at the end of the slides, right? But what you could do is, in developer edition, make your own template and then have it appear in that dialog window. And if you'll recall, earlier in this session, that dialog window is the configuration apps template, a uh, configurable apps template dialog, right? I'm in the map viewer, I hit share, I can see some configurable apps. So let's think about this. What if you have an organization? You know that in your organization, you always have to have an app with a red bar at the top for branding purposes. Well, you could make your web app builder apps with its specific functionality, all with a red band. Then you can add it to that dialog so when your end users make an app, all their apps will have a red band, okay? How do I do that? Well, I choose the export as template option in Web App Builder. And in fact, I can do this inside ArcGIS Online, inside Web App Builder and ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS or Developer Edition, right? I set its parameters. I then export it <coughs> as a template item, which lives in my organization, and I add it to a group, and then I set that group to the map viewer property of my org. And I promise I will demo this for those of you who want to see it after the slides, okay? So we have a few more on community and resources, right? I mentioned GeoNet. I mentioned that they're very active community members. We have these three different forums. The, uh, the blue one and the black one, very popular, right? The general and the custom uh, widgets. And the custom themes is still new, but it's becoming more active as well. We encourage you, if you're gonna use Web App Builder, go to these sites. They are very uh, active, very resourceful. We have many contributors on these sites. Also, Rebecca, who is, you know, bless her heart, she maintains this uh, developer edition resource page. I took this screenshot this morning, so she updated it two days ago. Every time there's some new custom widget or some new news announcement or some new best practice, she posts it on this page. It's fantastic. <coughs> okay, road ahead. Where are we going, right? People are asking. That first bullet's pretty important. As you saw right now, you can use custom widgets in Web App Builder Developer Edition, but we've heard many users ask us to support the ability to enable custom widgets in Web App Builder in Portal for ArcGIS. We are working on it. If you want this functionality, please come see me so I can add your name to the list to make our case for urgency to another development team that starts with capital P that I will not name, but I want to push them to, to make it happen, okay? But it's coming. Also, uh, we do have plans to add more widgets, obviously. I know there's like a parcel widget. It's currently available from the solutions team. We want to enable that down the road. We have another one by the solutions team called uh, 
the environmental impact widget, but if you guys have feedback, if you guys have wants, come see us at the island. Um, also, we want to add uh, better support for the mobile user experience, right? So that is coming. But again, this is your developer summit. Come see Jinshaw, the team. Come see me. Let us know your feedback. Post on GeoNet. Vote on the idea site. I had a user yesterday say she wants to be able to edit attributes in the attribute table widget. I'm like, great. Let me take her name and contact information so I can add you to our, to help us prioritize. All right. Anything you want, you'd like to add? No. Or buy her a margarita when you see her in the evening, and then you know she can make she can add that enhancement. She is one of the key decision makers. All right. Where do I go to get more information? Right. We have the help documentation. We have the developer edition help documentation. There's a free live training seminar that you can listen to for 60 minutes. It goes through demos. It, some of the content's going to be reviewed because it's an intro session. There's also a web course you can take. Right? If you want this PowerPoint deck, let us know. It'll, uh, we can email to you next week, or it'll be on the preceding site in about a month. Other sessions for Web App Builder. Here they are. A lot of them are going to be in this room. A lot of them are happening today, but there's some tomorrow. For those of you who work for medium to large organizations, highly, highly encourage you to go to the last one. Web App Builder Deep Dive for Enterprise Deployments. What are the best practices? I've seen the content for this. Sam Libby is phenomenal. He's going to give some best. In fact, I'm going to be there to watch him. He's going to give some best, tip, uh, great tips and tricks. Okay. Or come to the showcase hall to the ArcGIS online island, and there'll be a web app builder station, and we will be there. Okay. So we covered a lot. We hopefully all of you now know what web app builder is. You know about its potential. You're excited to use it. More importantly, there's a big community. All right. Give us the feedback. Um, if, uh, so I, I can do a demo on the templates if you want to stay. I know lunch is coming up. If you have questions, we'll be here. Thank you guys for showing up. Please fill out the evaluation so we know what to add or remove or modify for the next time. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. All right. Thank you guys.